Good everyone, we're going to go over how to create a um, sun path uh, or do a sun analysis for um, your site as well, which can help inform your project. And we're going to do this also in Grasshopper with Ladybug. So we can we'll come into here. Let's make this a bit bigger. And uh, we can just turn this off for a minute. So turn the preview off so that it'll disappear. And we've got our project model, site model. Um, what we want to do now is come up to visualize data and then there's the sun path one. And what we're going to do, we can pull in the location information down into there. Um, and then that gives us uh, this crazy diagram on here. So we can see where north is and um, a little bit more sort of information about where the sun travels over the year. So we're going to connect that to um, the rhino sun. So we can go to analyze geometry, click on there, and it's got ladybug set rhino sun. So we can tell it to set the sun in rhino, which is quite helpful. So we're going to need location, and we need this HO. Y thing, and we also need that there. And that's uh, if we mouse over it, it tells us a little bit there. That's not so much in this one here. So, this is a number that represents um, a calendar day and the hour. So, the month, day, hour, and minute. So, we're going to have to create that. So, we can come up to here, and there's this day calendar uh, hoi. So we can add this in, so we can add that to our sum path, and we can also add it to our hoi. We can see here that it's yellow, so there's a little bit of an issue, we haven't got anything. We need to tell it to run, so we can control that with what's called a boolean operation. So if we go back to prams, the second one in is, is a boolean toggle, so basically it's a on off so at the moment it's set to off and that's fine so you can see that's that's gone we'll leave that there for now now we need to create these sort of sliders to control this so what we're going to do is go month so we're going to go one less than 12 and that'll give us a slider that goes from one through to 12 and just add that. I'll um, just change that to months so I know. And then we need one for day. So we're just going to go uh, one less than 31 and that will cover all the days for us. Let's just change that to days. Uh, if you're on, um, I think on the Windows version by connecting it up, it'll bring it across. And then we want 0 less than 24, so that'll give us the hours. And then if we really want, we can get down to the minutes, so we can go 0 less than 60. Mm. Minute. There we go. And we can tie that in. Now what this is going to give us is it's going to give us control of where the sun is um, at any time of the month. So we're going to jump to summer, December, and we're going to jump to the 20, 21st, 20, in around there. And then we can this across and you see in the plan there's a little uh, 
X coming across. So that's showing us where that path happens um, in the summer. So the summer uh, equinox, or summer solstice, sorry. Um, so that's the longest day. So we can see the sun rises there and comes over and sets. I'm also going to uh, set this to true. So I double click on that and now you can see we come into the perspective that it's really dark but we can sort of come right in here and get a sense of where that sun's going to come up and where it's going to uh, be obstructed so we can move around this model and get a sense and if we come in here and change uh, the time of day you can see and you can see the little spot and that's coming down onto our site. So we've got this centered at zero, zero, and that's coming into our, our site. So we can start to see where the sun will be at any time. So I can just move that through, and you can see it gets, it's dark. And if I change to the sixth, and then start moving that, we can see the sun is much, much lower in the sky and we have quite a different impact for the minutes or so the time of day. So we can move that and you can see the impact that the sun's having. Move it back. As we move over, so you can get a sense of where the sun will be and what it's going to be like. So I've set that to rendered, so we can sort of see what's going on. Also, if we want, we can export that, and that may be useful. So um, to oh, that's weird. What's going on? Oh no, that's right. So if we come over here. Move this over, and I'm just going to create another uh, new layer, so new layer, and call it uh, Sun Path. So now we have, and I'll set that to default. So if we come in and bake our Sun Path, uh, bake, and make sure it's on Sun Path. It is. And I'm going to group it here as well, so it just makes life a little bit easier. And again, we've got the same issue with uh, the text freaking out for me, uh, but we know how to quickly change that. So let's just turn everything else off. And we can start selecting. So we need to ungroup that because I grouped it so move that out of the way come up here ungroup and that will now have ungrouped that so I can sort of select some of these pieces so see the text let's close that out of the way and we can set that to one or whatever works for your um, your model I've grouped that, uh, so that was, I've set that to one as well, so one, I'll select all these, set that to oh, one, and then I'll go through and just delete these first, we don't need that much information in this particular model, so then we can go in and select these and set that to 0.5 and it looks a little bit tidier so we, we can start to see uh, where that will be and oh, let's just bring that down um, and let's just edit that as well Let's just call this Wellington uh, Sun Path and apply. 
and that gives us um, some key bits that we can can pull on later hopefully that helps sense helps give some better understanding of your site so let's just turn everything else back on so while we're working we might not want all of that so we can open up grasshopper uh, and that gives us some control but let's just turn that off turn that oh, double click that and that's false so we're back to how we were before um, and you can sort of see where the sun rises and sets as well so let's save all that so save uh, put that in my sark 111 and then project or oh, we need a new folder or project 3 create a new folder project oh hang on that's going to do it in the wrong place there and then new folder project 03 let's even do yeah um, suck one one just so we know what that folder actually is and I'm gonna call that uh, site um, and we'll just call this one ladybug well, yes, no, let's call it so, 111P3 um, site. And we can come back to that later. Save that. And then also here. And we're going to save this as file. On a, on a Mac you have to hold down option and it comes up with save as on a PC you be able to or Windows machine you be able to just uh, say and I can click in here and go to the recent places and just call this um, so, P3 site and something like that routine so we're all saved and ready to go and because if I turn this off that disappears um, from there and I want to start creating stuff I can create a new layer and sort of um, just call it a structure or something to start with or well, design um, and make that your default layer and then I can turn the sun path and sun rose off if I want so I can use those uh, when I need depending on what's going on hopefully that was helpful to start getting uh, some site analysis together